God bless you. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight and tuning in uh, to our midweek Bible study. My name is Josh. I'm a member of uh, Uprising Church here in Rialto. And uh, I want to thank God first and foremost for the opportunity, as well as our pastor for asking me to share this lesson with you tonight. So um, I hope that uh, everybody enjoys it and more than anything learns something for their lives. Um, on behalf of my wife and I, I want to basically tell all the members of our church that we miss you dearly. I know it's only been almost about, about two months that we haven't seen each other or congregated. Hopefully soon we will be able to do it and we can't wait to reunite with each and every one of you again. Anyway, so since you'll see that my style is more uh, focused on teaching, I encourage you to uh, pull out a notepad and a pen or a tablet or anything to take down notes so that you can follow me. In. I think it'll be a little easier and also, I mean, I have everything behind me here. So, you know, jot down whatever you want so that, you know, whatever can help your benefit you. Let's go before the Lord in prayer as we get into this uh, lesson for tonight. Father, we thank you for this moment and opportunity that you have allowed us to be here, God, paying attention and listening to your word, God. We ask that you open our hearts and our understandings and our mind, God, so that we may listen and hear what you have to say to us, Lord. Learn it and apply it to our life, Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Whatever you have for us today, let us be available to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, let's jump straight to it. As we were discussing or saying, the topic for tonight is inevitable. That's the title. Um, the question for you guys. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word inevitable? Perhaps uh, something that is going to happen. Some, or you can't escape it, something that is there, etc. Or maybe other ideas. Now, let's define the term inevitable to get a deeper understanding from it. What does inevitable mean? First and foremost, it's an adjective. It describes something. Well, what is it describing? It describes something that is certain to happen, or it's going to happen. Also, it's unavoidable. Something that is unavoidable. The key Bible verse that we are going to focus on or use, you know, to guide us in this topic of an, uh, term inevitable, it's found in Amos chapter 4 verse 12. Let's read it. Therefore, thus will I do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. Now, a person can search for God in this world and find him. He can serve and love him with all his heart, or he can reject and deny it. In other words, this is we know it as freedom of, of choice, or easier terms, free will. Using his free will, he, he can even say that God does not exist. However, at some point, everyone in their history will have to meet Jesus and answer for their actions. Let's read a portion of the Bible found in Acts chapter 9, verses 3 through 5, and look at an example of an encounter with Jesus. Read with me. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. Remember this last phrase uh, because we will come back to it in a little bit. The last phrase in the bottom that's underlined. As you can see, God is inevitable for every human being. Nothing and no one escaped or escaped from Him. Again, someone can insist until they are tired saying that there is no God. You can write books trying to prove your claims. You can even organize conferences de uh, denying the divine reality. But no attempt... To deny God will really work for God is real. Can you say amen to that? So, God is inevitable for every human being. In the scripture we just read, we see Saul experiencing how real God is. Because once again, God is inevitable, right? Let's look once again at this last phrase. It is hard for you to kick against the goat. Or in other words, to resist me. God was saying this to Saul. Let's break it down even more. Goat. What's a goad? There are different descriptions of a goad or a sting, a thorn, something that pierces or stabs. The main point of this, it causes pain. 
An example of a go that I want to share is a spiked stick used for driving cattle or other animals. The more the end, uh, if you look up here, basically, here's an illustration and here's a go right here. The more the animal struggled against it, the more it pricked sharply or stabbed or pierced it. Here's basically the sharp edges or points, and that's when they would move or try to go its own course, it would be pierced or stabbed. God used his analogy to explain to Saul the results of fighting against him. In other words, this is describing the suffering which man is sure to encounter when he resists God or fights against God. That is what was happening with Saul. He was going to wound his own self. And we can get way deeper into this point, but because of lack of time, we want to focus more on how God is unavoidable and is inevitable and not necessarily the result when we choose to resist him. Let's move on. God is the final reality to whom everyone will give an account. Let's read what Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 says about this. All things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Nothing can change the fact that we are all going to have to meet God now or in eternity. Not thinking about this does not make God cease to exist. He still exists whether you like it or not. Someone can silence his conscience, but he cannot silence the voice of the Lord. Even if you forget who you are, that still will not change at any point who God is. He is inevitable for every human being, and it makes no sense to hide from him, because we are all going to have to meet him at one point or another. There are no hiding places when it comes to God. Let's read what Psalms 139 verses 7 through 11 tell us about this. This is what uh, the King David said. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. The point of the scripture is that God is everywhere. He is inevitable. What do you think is better? Meeting God after this life or now? I hope your answer is now. Why? Because now is the time to think about Him. Not later I will think of Him or maybe some other time. You never know. There might not be a, a next time. Some philosophers have taught that it was man who created God. Even they will discover one day to their own terror that God is a creator. Just like King David stated, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. That's found in Psalm chapter 100 verse 3. Our intelligence and creativity cannot erase God no matter how much we want. He fills it all. Let's read what Jeremiah 23 verses 23 through 24 say. Am I a God near at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar of? Can anyone hide himself in secret places so I shall not see him? says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth? says the Lord. This scripture is basically describing how God fills everything, everything in heaven and earth. No one runs away from God. Just try to run away and such an attempt is nothing but nonsense. No action, no philosophy, no brilliant idea of man can eliminate God, ever. Someone can deny the existence of the sun and hide from it in the deepest part of the earth. However, the sun will remain, bright as it always has been. Sooner or later, everyone will have to meet God because, again, He is inevitable. Which brings us to our next question and, quite frankly, the main idea and point of this teaching. So what is the wisest and most sensible thing that you and I can do? Undoubtedly, surrender our life completely to Him. To conclude, I have a series of questions uh, to get us to analyze it. Or ourselves. Where are you now? Have you already given your life to Him? Do you live near or far from God? Are you ready to meet Him? Have you been born again through water and spirit? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Do you really know Him or have you only heard of Him? Any position in life far from Jesus will always be insecure. Always. For the safest place in the universe is to be in His powerful hands. And remember, our God is inevitable. 
So let us be in His powerful hands. Remember, God is inevitable. And as we end, we'll end with the verse that we opened up this evening. Therefore, prepare to come to meet your God. Remember, God is waiting for you and He wants to meet with you. Don't wait till it's too late. Let's thank the Lord. Father, uh, we thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for helping us to understand, God, that you are inevitable, Lord, and that no matter what happens, we will not be able to avoid you, and that it's certain, Lord, that one day we will meet with you or meet you, Lord. Help us, Lord, so that we may make the rational decision of not waiting for it to be too late, that at the end of the day when we meet you, it may be before it's too late and when there is a chance and we have the ability to receive salvation, Lord. Help us, Lord, to make this wise decision, Lord, of not only meeting with you, but serving you, Lord, and following your commandments, following your guidelines, Lord, following what you ask for us to do. Help us, Lord, to keep your word in our hearts and practice it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you.